Very well, welcome to uh, all of our listeners here at Radio Maria Ireland. Uh, we are back for another episode of Deeper Than Psychology with Sam Chan. So Sam, welcome on the show once again. Thank you very much for having me again. We didn't really mention it last time, but the name of the show is Deeper Than Psychology. Yeah. Um, and you were obviously the person that came up with the name. What was what was your reason behind the name? Yeah, this really inspired by uh, a, f- a phrase that Carl Jung used to say. Um, Carl Jung is a psychiatrist. Uh, two centuries ago and he said all psychological problems are actually spiritual problem mm-hmm. of course this show we're going to cover a lot of how the mind uh, matches and you know maps up with the faith so I want to like just you know bring up all psychological problems or solutions basically what the the tradition of the faith mm. can uh, can help us to see different ways yeah for sure and we're trying to trying to do it in a way that is helping people currently as well in the world that we are living and um, and one of the biggest problems, I think, in this world that we are currently living in, in this time period, is the problem of identity. Mm-hmm. And people people really struggle with that. Um, and they struggle to find out, to actually understand what it actually is. Yeah. Um, so could you give us like a, like a, like a an abstract sort of summary on like mm-hmm. where the world is currently at the moment mm-hmm. when it comes to mm-hmm. identity? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting now, especially, I mean, we've gone through many kind of... Uh, phases of time in the last let's say two centuries mm-hmm. all the way from the enlightenment uh, and then you have the modernism and then you have postmodernism. Um, the, the different thinkers have different kind of uh, uh, philosophies sure. all the way you started from uh, Descartes who talks about you know you know I am I, I think therefore I am you know the whole identity thing uh, based based on the premise of a uh, kind of falsifying yourself or even doubting yourself mm. and then later on maybe less than 100 years ago you have Karl Popper who basically is the let's say the founder of modern science who talks about falsifiability who want to falsify everything that you basically you're using scientific method to find out a, a conclusion sure. uh, but that really got by science but then we, we're way more than science right? we're way more than atoms we're way more than how we can see how we measure so who we are actually is very deep in our psyche and uh, mm. and really who are we uh, who are we anyway right so i think the mainly two ways to well one thing is that we all men are mortal right we are all we're all dead so what else are we in common we can think um we have we are always the son or daughter of our parents our father and the mother and because this show, I want to t- tell you guys, tell people that to show people how the mind actually maps with the faith. Mm. Of course, in the faith, we have one Father, right? God the Father, and I think it's, it's uh, in- immovable. Your identity as a son of the Father is immovable. Mm. The the filial love that you have, you know, as an adopted son of God, and also you become the the brother essentially of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. So that's just how much we really are. And I think if we're all really rooted in this identity, then uh, no waves or storm can actually, you know, mm. put us down. Yeah. yeah. And there's the thing of like, you know, I am, therefore I am, or um, yeah, I am, I think, I therefore, think therefore I, I am. am. Yeah. Um, and there's also the thing of like, um, there, there is a huge culture around like being yourself and yeah. there's a lot of support with yeah. that. And yeah. a lot of good can yeah. come from that as Absolutely. well. Like, you know, yeah. being yourself. Yeah. Um, because a lot of people need that in, in their life is they just need a bit of encouragement mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and that depends and people can t- receive that in different ways as well and um, depending on who they're receiving it from and when like at what point in their life they're receiving it mm-hmm, as well mm-hmm. so what advice would you give to someone like how 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 do you receive that advice well and mm-hmm. not to take it in a in a way that you think kind of in a post more than this way sure yeah right yeah no totally i think like we're all unique, right? You're completely different to me. Mm-hmm. And even if you have an identi- like an identical brother, you know, you are also completely, in a sense, different to him. Because mm-hmm. let's say, well, our atoms, our genes are only one, only one part of us, right? Where how, we are, how we perceive the world is completely different to any other people. So even okay. you imagine the world as a space and as a space where we are all who have pass away and who are to come in the world right when this kind of in this vacuum and then but god our father has always in his mind 
our existence. Like, sure. how cool is that? Yeah. Probably like what well, there are always like seven point eight billion in the world, but then it's only in this time. But imagine all the people that have existed and going to exist,、mm-hmm. and we are all of us are so different to everyone, right? Sure. So um, and it's right. Like, be yourself is a is an amazing、uh, mantra, let's say, but. You need to realize where is that identity come from,、mm. and then how do you delve inside the identity and like kind of、uh, develop it.、Mm. Let's say I'm a psychologist. I love playing football, and I love to th- talk to people. I love to get to know people. Well, that's my hobby. That's my interest, right?、Mm. But my, you might have completely different interests.、Mm. And people now say, you know, find your niche, right? Find your way that you can develop, and you really like kind of ace it and and then、uh, excels in it. And make people basically have your place in the society or in the world. That make it, let's say, is your brand, right? That's perfect. That's absolutely all right. But if there's a challenge comes around and that give you a hit and you know makes you doubt your identity, let's say I'm a very good、uh, football player and I get injured. Well, many professional football player get injured all the time, right?、Mm. And they're all injured for ten to twelve months. So if they build their identity around football, and if some impediment prevents them from, let's say, performing it or playing in it, in this case, football,、mm. then what do they rely on at that moment in time? Imagine a football player and you're out injured. If your identity is full on football, it's like, what am I do? I have no purpose in my life. Yeah. So identity, if we Christians, we want to live. In the love that we ex- we created,、mm. that we need to, to really root ourselves in the identity of the Son of God. Yeah. Um, and then everything comes from it. Because if I'm a, if I am a Son of God and I'm a football player, and、mm. it, 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 being a football player is an accident, right? Sure.、Yeah. And if I'm out injured, I can just find another thing that the God the Father God the Father have、uh, created me for. You know. Sure. So I think there's a good way that you have to f- find your niche. You really perform really well. But then that is always a reflection, or maybe that is developed from being really rooted in being a son of God. Yeah, and if you're someone coming from a place where you you you're struggling to find your identity,、mm. being as a son or daughter of God,、mm. and then what comes from that is a lot of like just insecurity. Yeah, w- like what 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 are some like practical steps that you can take towards <laughs>、totally. towards yeah, that? Yeah, a good therapist will. Uh, in the first few sessions, really like kind of almost scrutinize you. You might even feel offended having that those conversation of really find out who you actually are. And、mm. uh, might you know the upbringing, the relationships you have you have had. Right. The, you know. This is if like a practical experience with therapists. Yeah. Let's yeah. say, or even you have a good friend. Like you know, people even say like talk to a friend if you don't have a therapist. Or even、yeah. journaling is the next best friend of、okay. being、uh, of talking to a therapist. Um. So. What we usually do as a clinician, we find out we we ask questions that help the person that、um, to map themselves in the world、mm-hmm. according to relationships. Okay. Because I say the primary relationship we would have is with our parents, right?、Mm-hmm. And and that's usually it. I mean, where you're from. I mean, your cultural background and also your personal relationship,、mm-hmm. right? Your the relationships with the parents and the siblings.、Mm-hmm. Uh, and from that, I mean, a lot of memories, a lot of associations you have formed from that. And this one, you really have to go back to the memories, put yourself in those places, and、uh, see where you most felt loved.、Mm. Right? You deep down, you really felt loved, and、uh, that's the moments where, I mean, those relationships are really a reflection of the love of the father. Right?、Sure. If we can see that, like that moment, I'm really loved by my father. By my mother, by my sibling, by my teacher,、mm-hmm. and then you somehow you might see that might be a reason. I like never felt that before. Where could I find it again? Sure, yeah, okay. And then from there you can slowly you know come to because you have to find what is the constant. And as Christian, we know that God the Father's love、mm-hmm. is constant.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but what else is constant? And maybe the next best thing is our parents. Sure. But then if someone. Who, for unfortunately, don't have that、uh, affection from the parents.、Uh, it's quite hard for them to identify elsewhere. But there's always something that needed to be healed,、mm. and from the healing, there's come forth another layer of、uh, renewal.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
just out of curiosity as well, is as a, as a therapist, is that where you think you get the most information out of patients? Is from when you ask them those questions about, let's say, the culture they were brought up in, yeah. or their family. Is that yeah. where you get the most help that you need as a therapist, or the information that you need as a therapist? The world, everything in the world is relational. Yeah, everything, right? You think of colleagues in the workplace, in mm-hmm. the family, uh, in the classroom. Everything is relational. Even the model of the Trinity is relational. Mm. So. I believe everything is relational. So yes, you find out the person's identity from their most intimate relationships. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, totally. I mean, even as, as like you make friends and first thing you ask, one of the first thing, if you're brave enough, I mean, nowadays you're so, you know, you're sure. like, oh, yeah. gee, I don't even want to know who, what's your name, that kind of thing. Yeah. Where are you from? Like, uh, no, you have to get to know a person with love, right? Sure. With total acceptance and sincerity and openness. It's like, yeah, like, I mean, do you, are you from a big family? That's usually like sure, one of yeah, the yeah. easiest questions you can ask your friends. And then just the whole door, people open up, oh yeah, I have four siblings so or not. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. Um, so that was a bit of a bit of a segue, but yeah. just to bring it back, um, that's, that's, that's great to hear that a therapist can do that. But as someone who isn't a therapist and I know someone is struggling with, um, with their identity, mm. what approach can I take to, to help Without someone? Without a therapist? Yeah. Yeah. Um, to find... Is my, like my primary... At the moment, if I was to to encounter someone um, who did struggle with their identity and struggled to understand it, my first instinct is to tell them to seek help where they're like you know probably mm-hmm. more likely to get better help than I'm able to yeah, provide them. You know, right. but is there something that someone who doesn't know a lot about psychology can do mm-hmm. um, and and help someone? Yeah, um, I think meditation really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, even you're a believer or not, uh, just put you put yourself into a mindful presence mindfulness a state of mindfulness and uh what what do you have to be brave enough this very like it depends really on the bravery of you of yourself is that are you willing to go back to your memories mm. uh, of those past traumas or even like happy moments yeah where you feel yourself alive the most mm-hmm. they're the moments that really rooted like take up almost like you know have a great part of my heart is belong to that relationship right? yeah so you go back to that and then to to find yourself in that because this this is funny right in in a in a theater people performing in a play people performing they're not themselves right sure they're very self-conscious uh but when you're living when you're soaked into a book or movie you don't feel that yourself and you're most alive in those moments right sure. so what i'm getting yeah. into is the moments that you at least self-conscious uh, is where you can find yourself the most. It's very contradictory. Mm-hmm. It's very kind of a uh, paradoxical, um, but it is yeah. where it is where it, all relationships are. Okay. Yeah. And what I suppose I'm going to ask the question again of how do I find my identity? But like, if if I have if I if I'm someone that claims to have found my identity, yeah, right. When they clearly they, they just they have not found their identity, right, right. Well, except they just. Like everyone's identity is in God, and they are either a son or daughter of, of God. Mm-hmm. But if they refuse that to be their identity, that will then be replaced by something else. That's right. And so, that's if, right. Okay. If, if you I have gone into you, yeah. that situation, like, how how do you even be open to that thing? Yeah, like, that's true. So, you know? so Portilek is a is a theologian, uh, theologian in maybe in the last century. He said uh, the word worship comes from worth-ship. It's the highest value that you give. So, for example, this person gives the highest value to, I don't know, the, the possession that he has, right? So okay. maybe his his identity is deeply rooted in what he possessed, right? Then that might be have to have to be challenged in a way mm. that he realized what he possessed should not be obtaining the first uh, rank of the parity of his uh, of his morality, basically, right? Okay. So it's like, well, what, for example, go back to the football player uh, example that I was just giving. Um, is that why is football your first, uh, like your your first worship, mm. your, your number one worth? Like, why is it not your spouse or your family, right? Your friendship, yeah. like, have you thought of other ways? Because if you're a football player, you only could play 10, 12, 15 years. Say if you're a work worker, you can only work I don't know thirty, forty years most. Okay. But like, what else? What other than that is, will you be the most okay. alive? 
That's, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Like these things are just temporary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, so. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I think we've just about run out of time. I know that's flown by, but yeah. that's the way things are. Absolutely. Very Maria. So um, if anyone has any questions for Sam um, or would like to see any um, other topics discussed on the show uh, or if has any questions for Sam as well on this current topic, uh, do get in contact with us. You can text or WhatsApp us at 089-467-2000. You can email us at info at radiomaria.ie or you can give us a call at 014-123-456. So until next week, take care and God bless. God bless.